हेलो फ्रेंड्स विल बी डिस्कसिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ आइसोकॉस्ट लाइन नाउ Now we have already understood what isocost mean. The term isocost is something that we have already understood in the previous chapters. Now we'll be defining what exactly isocost line means. So let us first start with the theory part of it, and let us understand what is the definition of it in terms of the production and cost concept here. Now isocost line shows various combinations of two factors of production that firm can buy with given outlays. In other word, isocost line is defined as the locus or rather the center of various combination of factors which a firm can buy with a given outlay. For example, isocost line. So indifference curve or the isocost line that we have studied earlier, we get to know that at any given point of time you get the same satisfaction. on an indifference curve that is what we have learned about indifference curve now when isocost line gives you a clarification as to any two factors of production or other factors of input that you take into consideration how much level of output can be derived out of it that is one part so this word or rather it is the center of various combinations which a firm can buy with a given outlay for example if you have a given fund here using this fund how many different combinations of factors you can buy at one certain point of time is described by an isocost line hence for example if we have combination ab if we have combination bc if we have combination ca and if we have combination cd or rather da all these combinations whatever we have now each of this combination can be bought with a given outlay here now which of the combination is the best combination is something that we need to look after and to figure out which is the best combination with that given cost or rather with that minimization of cost concept that we have to figure out there isocost line helps us make the decision now the isocost line is also known as the equal cost line or outlay line as it is assumed that there are only two factors of production we are assuming that there are only two factors of production that may be capital that may be land that may be labor or that may be capital any of it any of that assumption can be done here now thus the total cost incurred on factors of production for producing a good is the sum of payments made to labor and capital hence the two factors that were taken into consideration is labor and capital so it may be labor and it may be capital that we are taking into consideration now the total cost will be the total cost that you are incurring in labor and capital so whatever cost you are incurring in terms of labor and capital in production here that will be considered at the total cost and that will be a part of your iso cost curve now thus iso cost line in the equation form can be written as follows now if you have to write this isocost line in the equation let us figure out how exactly we can write that in the form of equation now c is equal to rk plus wl where c stands for the total cost incurred by the firm on purchasing the quantities of factors used for the production now this c is equal to kw or rather let us mention it in a simplest format that we can write it here let us write it in the better format let me just put up a different pen so that you can understand c equals to r k plus w l now c stands for the total cost incurred by the firm in purchasing quantities used for the production so whatever quantities that are being used or rather whatever quantities of factors of production that we are talking about how much ever the total cost is incurred in that that is termed as c here a stands for capital l stands for labor so this stands for capital this stands for labor now let us understand r stands for price of capital this r stands for the price individual price of that capital and w stands for the price of this labor individual price of this labor so price of this labor multiplied by the total quantity of capital purchased that is one thing multiplied by or rather addition of both these things so this is r multiplied by k that is price per capital into total capital quantity purchased this will be added with the price per labor multiplied by the total labor required so this combination plus this combination if you add that gives you a total of c which is the total cost that you have incurred 
in procuring these factors of production. Now, shape of isocost curve we have to define. Isocost line is a straight line which touches both the axes that is x axis and y axis. Let me just rub this off so that I can give you a better clarification on this part. This isocost line if we have x and y axis this line is one line which is a straight line basically and touches both the x axis and y axis so we can call that this is an isocost line or probably this is an isocost line whichever it may be. Now this is just for the clarification purpose that we are doing here nothing great about it line a b is the isocost line this will be something that will be shown in the next picture line a b passes through all the combinations of labor and capital which a firm can give or rather buy at a given outlay of say rupees thousand at a given price of the factors of production let us see the next picture here now this line a b see this is the y axis this is the x axis so line a b is touching both the y axis and the x axis now here this gives you these are the common options that you can buy so given outplay so for probably if you have a budget of 10,000 or other 1,000 here with 1,000 you can either buy combination of this that means it may be this much of capital and this much of labor this is one combination that you can buy let me just put up a different line for you at D at this point this is one combination you can have this much of capital and this much of labor here if D is the combination and the E combination will be this much of capital and this much of total labor at 1000 rupees so 1000 rupees being the total cost you can have either c you can have either d or you can have either e as a combination now this line or rather the line that is defined after all these combinations on the same line is known as an iso cost line so this is what iso cost line means now slope of the iso cost line the slope of the ISO cost line is the ratio of input prices. This is what we have defined. In figure 4.9, that is the earlier figure, units of labor are shown on X axis and units of capital are shown on Y axis. Let us go back to the same thing. Now, this 4.9, this is capital, this is labor. Let me just rub this off completely. So, if we have to say that in this figure, this X axis or other Y axis has capital and x axis has labor this is what they have defined here now the slope of the iso cost line would be the ratio of the price of labor to price of capital so if you have to figure out what is the difference or rather what is iso cost line giving you it is the price of labor upon price of capital or price of capital upon price of labor that is the ratio that you can pick up so the slope of ISO cost line, if we have to write it in a symbolical format, this is the price of labor upon price of capital. This is the formula that you can use here. Now, shift of ISO cost line. The more the cost or rather the more the budgeting can be done, ISO cost line can be shifted on the right hand side here. ISO cost line will shift under two circumstances. Now, what are those two circumstances? First circumstance or rather first instance says that when price of the factors remain unchanged but total expenditure made by the firm will change price of the factors that means the price of the inputs remain unchanged they are not changing but the total expenditure made by the firm changes in that case yes the iso cost line can shift from left hand side to right hand side because you are expensing or rather you are expanding your expenses you are making your budget a little higher earlier if it was 1000 rupees now we are changing it to 5000 so the iso cost line will be changed here but the factors the cost of the factors will remain the same Suppose producer wants to increase the total spending on the factors of production from 1000 to 1200. That is an example. Then ISO cost curve will shift outward. That means if this is 1000, it will shift on the right hand side. If you are reducing the budget, then it will shift on the left hand side here. Thus A dash B is the new cost curve that means this is the new cost curve that has been figured out earlier it was 1000 now it has moved or rather the budget has increased hence this is a new cost curve that has been defined. On the other hand if the producer wants to reduce the total expenses from 1000 to 800 it will shift on the left hand side or that means inwards so this is the inward side and this will be the outward side so this is all that you can think of whenever budget is expanding or budget is reducing here so if that is cost cutting this is the 
shifting that is inward shift will happen if there is more of cost expenses that is being done here by any of the organization it will be shift on the outward side or rather it will be shifted on the right hand side here now when expenditures on factors remaining unchanged or remains unchanged but the prices of the factors change this is one condition the reason that i'm talking about is the second condition or rather in second circumstances when it can change is first part the first part states that prices of the factors remain unchanged so this is one but expenditure the total cost total costing that i'm willing to put expenses or rather changes so here this what we are talking about is the first condition now the second condition has to be described here that will be related to something else now what is that thing for example let's see suppose the prices of both the factors decrease proportionately then the real income of the producer will increase which will shift the iso cost curve outward on the other hand when the prices of both factors increases the same proportion of the iso cost curve will change the first condition or rather the first condition was easily described the second condition speaks about when expenditure of the factor remains and change or rather if i am willing to spend both a and b a total of thousand itself this remains the same earlier this changed to 1200 now this remains the same only the prices of the factors that is a and b is changing right now so for example if you have to take the first condition ISO cost curve will change if A and B prices remain same but only the expenses that I'm willing to do that is 1000 I'm making it 12,000 or rather 1000 is being changed to 1200 so ISO cost curve will shift on the right hand side but now if the production cost or other factors of production prices itself are changing so for example my total cost is still 1000 this is the only amount that I'll be willing to pay or rather I'm willing to pay only this much of amount if this prices goes down then of course my iso cost curve will shift on the right hand side here why is because with reduced prices i can purchase more of those products with the same costing that i'm doing so i have to pay only 10000 but earlier with this thing i used to get only 10 units now let me just put it in a better way here earlier i used to get only 10 units here so when i'm talking about 10 units with this thousand i used to get only 10 units with every reduced item or rather if the costs are reduced now instead of 10 i'm getting 20 units hence the iso cost curve will shift on the right hand side if the prices of the factors of production is reduced but if the prices of the factors of production increases earlier with the same price I used to get 10 units now with the increased price I'm getting only 5 units then in this case the cost or rather the ISO cost curve will move on the left side if the factors of production or other factors of the production prices goes up so the price of the factors of production if it is going up then the ISO cost curve will shift on the left hand side if the prices of the factors of production goes down then it shifts on the right hand side that is the cost curve that we can discuss both the conditions first if the total expenses is increasing or decreasing second if the prices of the factors of production is increasing or decreasing now this is all or rather this is all that we can think of when it comes to iso cost curve or rather when we have to think of iso cost line so iso cost line iso cost curve the changes in the shifting pattern due to the price change of the total expenses or price change of the factors of production is something that you need to understand so this is all that we have to discuss when it comes to iso cost line here thank you